Hi, Mom. John, dear, did you register for your PVC? Not yet, Mom. I'm on my way to work. I'll do it then. Young man, did you register for your PVC? What? Why is everyone asking me that? The deadline is 30th of June. John, did you register for your PVC? What is going on today? The website is cvr.inacnigeria.org. Please register today or you're fired. Doc, what? I'm kidding, but please register. We're happy to report that John has finally scheduled his appointment for his PVC. What about you? Go to cvr.inecnigeria.org today. The deadline to register is the 30th of June. Hurry! Okay, so now... <laughs> <laughs> you look so cute. You look very cute. This is, this is your... <laughs> yes, not, definitely Met Gala. Yes. Okay. So, Miriam, give us some commentary. How are you feeling? Um, I'm not scared. Okay. <laughs> I'm a bit scared. <laughs> well, <laughs> at some point they got very aggressive. Okay. And they said that they were angry. Okay. Why? That the bees were angry that we're disturbing them. Oh, okay. Is it like their nap time and we're waking them up? <laughs> yeah, kind of. Yeah. Yes, yes. Okay. From Triple E Media, I'm Ramat Mohammed, and this is The Backstory. Last week, the 20th of May, was World Bee Day, and we released an episode about the most common topic that comes up when anyone talks about bees. Bee stings. Most people, especially those of us who are not used to bees, we have a fear of getting stung by bees. So in our episode last week, we interviewed a medical doctor, and he explained that most of us will not have a bad reaction if we're stung by bees, but about 10 to 20% of the population, they will have a strong reaction to bee stings. So if you wanna know more about what to do if you're stung by a bee, go back and listen to our last episode. In this episode, we're going to assume that you've overcome your fear of bees and you're ready to learn more about how to make money from bees. The first thing you need to do if you want bees to work for you, is you have to set up a home for them. An apiary is the name of the structure where you can keep beehives and bees. Normally, honeybees will build their own houses called honeycombs. They will pick places like branches of thick trees, in between rocks, on the roofs, basically any place that feels safe, and they will build their honeycombs. In nature, the bees use their own wax to build the honeycombs. Think of the honeycombs like a house, just like our houses have many rooms. The honeycombs are made up of small rooms which have six walls that give it a hexagonal shape. And in each of these rooms, the bees will store things like their eggs, pollen, nectar, and yes, they even store honey. Believe it or not, bees do not produce honey so that we can consume it. Bees actually make honey so that they can consume it. During the dry season or during cold months, when they don't have access to pollen or nectar, they can use the honey to survive. But around 9,000 years ago, humans actually figured out how to keep bees and we started using the honey and wax for food and medicinal purposes. Over time, we learned how to create apiaries which are artificial structures where they can breed and produce honey and wax for us. So we actually found an apiary in Yangoji. Yangoji is about an hour drive away from Abuja city center and the entire team went on a visit. The apiary is on a farm called the SCL Farms and BHF Agroforestry Project. 
we tried to find it using Google Maps, but we got lost along the way and we had to call Mr. Samuel Kosari, the farm manager for directions. We enlisted the help of a motorcycle rider and he helped guide us along. We left the office around 10.30 that morning and to get to the farm, we had to take a dirt road. Along the way, we had to pass through a stream, but after that, it was about a five minute journey to the farm. We passed by small communities that are surrounded by cultivated and empty expanse of land, just waiting to be put to use. Around 12 noon, we got to the farm. We were welcomed by Mr. Kosari and two of the beekeepers, Godwin and Barnabas. Now, there were seven of us from the Triple E team, but the farm only had three bee suits. Barnabas and Godwin would each wear one, so that meant only one of us from the team could go on the tour. I got into the suit. Doc ensured every part of my body was covered. It was hot in the suit and the boots were heavy. But then off we went to the apiary. From a distance of about 100 meters, I could see the apiary. It appeared to have a thatched roof supported by wooden slats on three sides. I would later learn that the roof was to provide shade for the hives. When we got closer, I saw that grass was covering the roof and that's in order to absorb the heat from the sun so that the hives do not overheat. Underneath the roof, there were these yellow boxes called Langstroth boxes and each box was on a stand and there were eight of the yellow boxes. I would also later learn that each of the boxes contained a hive. A hive is a man-made structure in which the honeybee colony lives. If a hive in an apiary is well managed, it can contain up to 80,000 individual bees. Now, the hives at SCL Farms and BHF Agroforestry are still young, so thankfully for me, they did not contain that many bees. Before the beekeepers opened the box to show me the hives inside, I noticed that Godwin was holding a contraption and he was using it to blow smoke. Now it turns out that when a bee is scared, it releases a chemical and that chemical acts like an alarm for other bees so that when they smell it, they also become alarmed and they get ready to attack. What the smoke does is it blocks the smell of the chemical. If they cannot smell the chemical, they are not alarmed and they can calm down. So every time Godwin blew the smoke, you could actually hear the difference in the buzzing. They get a lot more calm. I was really happy that Godwin had this and I kept asking him to use it. Now, each hive has a foundation sheet. The foundation looks like a honeycomb. Okay, so, so now, these are the this 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 these are the frames where the bees read the put the 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 the, the wax. So in the beginning you have to have something like this. This is called a foundation a foundation sheet. So the bees do not waste energy or productive time creating a comb. They can just get to work straight away, storing honey and pollen in the cells of the frame. Think about it like getting a house that already has all the rooms you need so that the only thing you have to do is move your furniture in and start living in it. But you're probably wondering, just because you build this house for them and you give them the foundation sheet, how do you get them to come and live in there and produce honey for you? Is there like a real estate agent for bees to get them to come to your apiary? It turns out that there is a way to attract bees to your apiary. First of all, the fact that the boxes are yellow is a good start. Bees are attracted mainly to white and yellow colors, which is why when you wear yellow clothing, you will appear like a big attractive flower and they will try to pollinate you. They, have, they, they like particular colors, like yellow, white. These are their favorite, 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 favorite uh, 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 colors. And that's why anything, anything that you have to do to, uh, 
track to the bees has to be either white or yellow but even apart from the color of the boxes you use and the foundation shades there are other things you can do to attract bees to your real estate um, so tell us what are all this okay so here this is this is the kenyan this is the kenyan top bar top bar yes the kenyan top bar okay. is produced locally it's produced locally by our, our carpenters here here in in, in in Angela. Then this is when a hive is constructed or bought, some attractants will be applied in the hive to bait the bees. Sometimes beekeepers will use a top bar hive instead of the Langstroth hive to attract the bees. So there is we have we have we have what is called wax. So you 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 boil this wax with with honey with a quantity you boil yes it with uh honey. honey okay and then you rub inside this uh kenya top bar then after attracting them into the top bar they will transfer them to the langstroth it's not just enough to build the bees a home and to give them foundation sheets and to attract them if you really want the bees to be good tenants and work for you for a long time, it is important that you help them maintain their home. Help them keep their boxes clean. If the box is clean, then you're going to be driving germs and other insects away. This helps keep the colony healthy and a happy tenant is a long-term tenant. Now, it could be that you do everything to keep the bees happy but they still end up leaving. We learned that at one time, the SCL Farms and BHF Agroforestry Project actually had 27 boxes, but the bees from all but eight boxes have flown away. The beekeepers are still trying to troubleshoot what happened, and we hope they're able to figure it out and recover their bee colonies soon. Thank you to Mr. Samuel Kosari, Godwin Barnabas, and all the members of the SCL Farms and BHF Agroforestry Project for entertaining our visit. If anyone has a suggestion for how they can recover their bee colonies, reach out to us and we'll be happy to connect you. Now, our next interview was with Chi Okafor. She's the CEO of Kandaki Honey. She keeps bees at a large scale for commercial purposes. And when we spoke to her, she taught us all about how she got started and how she's able to grow and sustain her business. You can listen to our full discussion with Chi on our website or on any of the major podcast platforms. Just search for the backstory from Triple E Media. And we'll also include links to that bonus episode with Chi in the show description. The Backstory is a Triple E Media production. Production copyright 2022 Triple E Media Productions. If you enjoyed this episode of The Backstory and you would like to hear more, go to our website at 234audio.com to play the sample content. Then download our app from the Google Play Store for even more episodes. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel at 234audio to watch the video for this episode make sure to click the notification bell, like, and leave a comment. Our episodes can also be found on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, TuneIn Radio, or wherever you get your podcasts. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and leave a comment. This episode of The Backstory was produced by Ramat Mohammed, Miriam Mohammed, Alexandra Gekpe, Uche Mba, Dominic Tabakaji, and Sam Tabakaji, executive producer Ramat Mohammed. Thank you to Mr. Samuel Pasari, Barnabas, Godwin, and all the members of the SCL Farms and BHF Agroforestry Project over at Yangoji for taking us on a very safe tour of the apiary. I'm Ramat Mohammed. See you next week. <laughs>